Without further ado, I want to bring our first interview uh, to the seat right here. Um, please give a round of applause for our friend and our brother, Marcus Jackson. <laughs> My dude. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Man, I'm good. It's Friday night. I know. Yeah. But get, how many songs can you think of that got Friday night in it? I can only actually, right now, Yeah. I can only think of the, the song from growing up from when Full House and Family Matters would come on. It's Friday night and the mood is right. Cause I'm gonna have some fun, TGIF. Yeah. Oh, you remember I thought, that joint? I, I remember. I thought TGIF. you were going somewhere else. I thought you were doing um, cause it's ladies night. But they oh, wasn't. That wasn't on Friday. I know, but Friday night, the night brought in the song. See, yeah, I know. Okay. That's why. Yeah. I, I misled you. The other thing I was thinking is, <laughs> um, what is it? Uh, it's Friday. You ain't got no job. And you ain't got a lot of do, things to get do. into. We going to praise the Lord is what they said. That's not what they said. They said we going we gonna to get high is what they said. Um, <laughs> that's what they said. I just want to make sure that I accurately quote. Movie. You know what I'm saying? Ice Cube worked hard on that script. He did. He did You're real hard. do that man like that. Man. I think people was getting paid like five grand to do that. Do those $500. $500. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, yeah. Subway sandwich. I know. But, that, but I would have did it if Dre called me up and was like, yo, I'm making a movie. I'm like, I'm doing it. Just the same way Hedy. just showing up. Hedy's just like, yo, I'm, I'm doing something. I'm like, I'm there. He gave me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> An actual sandwich. <laughs> Which is really good, by the way. Hedy, who's, uh, who sponsors the food tonight? Oh, we, everybody okay, sponsors okay, food. Okay. okay, normally we had a food sponsor. Thank you to, we didn't the, have one to, to, uh, to the people. To the people. Before we get going today, man, because I only got what I got, 20 minutes. I only got 15, 20 minutes. Sean interview was 35. I was told we can't do that again. Uh, I, I was told we can't do it again. Fair enough. But I want to read this in my, um, in, in my scouring of the internet. Okay. I want to read this. It says, the East Side Drummer. Grew up on the east side of Oklahoma City and found himself submerged in the culture of hip hop at a young age. At 16, he had his own home studio and was producing music for local artists in Oklahoma City. Um, by the age of 18, he was rapping, producing. He had his own Christian hip hop group called Exodus Movement. Anybody familiar with Exodus? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, during his time with Exodus, he found he found his niche by producing, emceeing, and engineering. Producing, emceeing, engineering. In his 10 years with the group, they put out five albums, two mixtapes, all of which was uh, lead produced and engineered by this young man right here. In 2008, he produced the track Go Hard for Grammy Award winner Lecrae earning himself his first Dove Award nomination. In 2010, he felt led to go out on his own and become a solo artist on his freshman album called Going In. The album won over critics with Christian hip hop, leading him to be nominated as New Artist of the Year. In 2011, he produced the second track for Lecrae, titled More, on the album Rehab Overdose. This time, he and Lecrae won the Dove Award for Hip Hop Album of the Year. In 2013, he dropped his first LP, Band Camp in March. He dropped his second LP uh, in the same year of October, titled Die Daily. This is longer than a mug, bro. <laughs> Two in a year is which, wild. Which, which was an instant hit with the fans. He was featured artist at uh, South by Southwest in 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017. He was already confirmed as a featured artist in 2018 at the time this was written. Uh, he also uh, started the Die Daily Movement with a collective of, of, of other artists uh, and producers whose mission is to save their community. Their motto being, die to self, live for Christ. And serve others. And serve, that's not, oh, and serve others. Sorry, it is on there, my bad. Katie uh, released Die Daily Annihilation on September 2016, Die Daily 3, October 2017. And this was written seven years ago, which means you've done so much stuff <laughs> since then. <laughs> I don't know how you found. 
I scoured. A se- a se- wait, how many years is that? Uh, 2017, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23. So six years ago. Six-year-old bio. I, I have an updated one. You have an updated one? Yeah. I, w- I wanted to read this one. I mean, I like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. That's a, I, mean, I mean, it's intense. Yeah, it's, it's good. It sounds... Sounds nice. Sounds like I was trying to sell something. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and, then at, and then at the bottom of it, it's got, which is your favorite Cadence song? And so unless you choose, I started to fan out and just give him some old spam. He probably don't have the same email no more. I do. Do you have the same email? What email is that? Throw it out there for the people so they can spam it. Uh, CadenceOKC at Gmail. CadenceOKC uh, at Gmail. And that was CadenceOKC.com, that, that website. I need to update my website because yeah. I'm still paying for it. You still paying for it? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So, uh, man, I, I know you as somebody that I don't know anybody as east side as you. And so when you hear that, you're talking about like homegrown at the age of 16, 18, and then you go on to, to record with people and uh, awards and nominations and engineering and producing and MCing. Like, bro, you've led a life up to seven years ago, six years ago, and then since then you've done some, some pretty cool stuff as well. Like, what do you hear? Like, what do you think when you hear that being read? I mean, it could be a little bit, it could make you feel a little uh, embarrassed mm. in a way. Not in a bad way, but, you know, just like, you know, people reading out your accomplishments yeah. while you're staring at them really closely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But <laughs> but I will say that um, I'm, I'm typically, like, filled with a lot of gratitude for all the things I've been able to do and experience and Mm -hmm. the opportunities that's been granted to me um the gifts that i feel like god has given me to drive uh, especially in those years like my drive uh you named one where it was like drop this project and then in the same later this year i'm dropping another project yeah and if i'm correct i actually did four projects that year because i did entirely two separately different projects that wasn't under cadence wow. as a solo artist so like that drive and that time uh period it defined a lot for me in that era and i was able to and i saw fruits of that labor mm-hmm. so i mean i was just grateful like i just like making music yeah yeah so if, if somebody leaves oklahoma city in 2016 2017 and i mean they are at die daily uh, concerts and you know you up there and, and you getting them hype and you getting them crunk yeah. and then they they move away and they come back in 2023 and all they know you as is music yeah give a give, a, give a brief update like yo man you still rapping and then you yeah, be like well, you know I, I man <laughs> I still freestyle my car but, okay um <laughs> I usually respond with when I'm able to, uh-huh. and from time to time, I do uh, touch music, but these days I've been focused on community work. So, What type of community work is that? Um, I have a nonprofit organization called Urban Bridge, and so we just create holistic pathways to opportunity, bridge opportunity gaps, and our slogan is really power and potential. Yeah. And where you from or your circumstance shouldn't determine your future. So mm-hmm. we just want to bring hope to East Side Oklahoma City and communities like that. Absolutely. Um, I, I typed in your name, OKC, just Marcus Jackson, OKC. Yeah. Then I put in Cadence on there. And the first uh, 20 things that popped up was all about the bridge. Really? Yeah. I'm Google myself. <laughs> was it Google? <laughs> it was Google. Just on Google. Nice. Yeah. And, and it's uh, interesting to see uh, people transform and kind of mature. Um, just kind of over their their life, and I mean, I come into the to the city in twenty oh no no two uh, two thousand six two thousand seven, and as soon as I come onto the scene, I meet Hetty, and Hetty is steeped in hip hop and music and poetry and the arts, and so I got to meet a lot of folks just like you, um, just by being around the industry, yeah. and so when you think about uh, the people that you've met. And how the industry, the music industry, has impacted you. Like, what are some of the things that stand out to you the most outside of relationships? I, relationship is low hanging fruit. Like, yeah. I know you met a lot of people, but outside of that, yeah. how has music, producing, MCing, engineering, writing, like, how's all that stuff impacted you as a human? Um, what I've learned is that in whatever you do, you know, you have to you have to have repetition in it. You know, so you can have a gift for whether it's writing, if you have a gift for music, if you have a gift for public speaking, you have to have repetition, you have to practice, you have to do it every day um, because the people that's doing that are the ones that tend to go a little further with it uh, because when they do pull your card, mm-hmm. you know, you want to be great at that thing. 
Um, and I've also learned that you je- you're only as good as you believe you are. Mm-hmm. And confidence is a big is a is a very important piece to when in the artistic world you have to be confident here first before you put it out to people. Otherwise, um, it's actually more painful to release stuff and it's more painful to perform because you're not confident here first. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about a time where you stood on stage and the people just weren't feeling you. <laughs> Ooh wee. He said, which one? Ooh wee. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it happens from time to time. I remember I got a um I got booked for something with high schoolers, which high schoolers can be uh brutal. Yeah, they can Did we say both brutal at the same time? Brutal. Because we, we know. We know. Um and typically in a captive audience, like in a youth ministry mm-hmm. setting, for example, um, this is like a treat for them compared to like the typical youth night. Yeah. So you get received better, smiles, they're eating pizza and popcorn, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all of that. Um, but when you're in a huge gymnasium with horrible sound on a gymnasium microphone <laughs> with- The, the, re- uh, the echo and the- Yeah, in, in Mustang, Oklahoma. Woo. With 5,000 high schoolers oh, that bad. can't understand what you're saying, yeah. um, that can be a little unnerving. Yeah. And so it's just like, can y'all hear me? And it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know he said something. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? And I'm like, uh, DJ? And it's like, ain't no DJ. Ain't no DJ. It's a dude up there, you know, and just like. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was rough. So they weren't feeling you. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, they didn't get a chance to feel you. Yeah. Like the you, the deck was stacked against you. Yeah. Couldn't hear the music. All I heard was echoes. It was just, it was just madness. It was chaos. I mean, I think the thing that made it feel so bad was that they actually just like blocked me out. Mm. They're just like nothing down there is happening. Yeah. So as I'm looking, they're like up playing with each other, running around, <laughs> talking, like, and I'm just, I was just, I just looked over to the guy that that had me do them. Yeah. I mean, I could keep going. But can we like? Can we not? Right. Yeah, it's not good. So, so I know for every one of those, hopefully you've had ten other ones where they was feeling you. Yeah. And um, I recently saw a um, a clip of a guy who um, is an upcoming artist, and um, he's kind of checking his sound. And as they were playing the song, the audience started singing it. Ooh. And he's like turned around and looked. Um, we've had Sean Johnson on here talking about like what happens when you show up and people know your music and yeah. they just vibing with you. Like, yeah. I can't imagine what that feels like. Yeah. So tell me what it's like when like, I mean, track after track is hitting and people yeah. vibing with you and you say, get your hands up and they actually put their hands yeah. up. Unlike Sunday morning, sometimes yeah. when the pastor be like, yeah. wait, never mind, go yeah. ahead. But maybe that's just my look church. Look to your neighbor and, and say. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then you got all the people who don't want to look, they be like. Hoping the person next to him don't look. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, but but like when they feeling you, what does that feel like? Um, man, it's 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 energizing. You know, like you wanna you wanna keep going. You wanna give them more. So it's like you, I I, I definitely feed off the audience. So I'm not that guy that's like if people are visibly not enjoying, mm-hmm. I'm not the guy that's gonna like jump around and like, you know, I don't care. You know, I'm gonna give it every. I'm just like look. I don't want to put y'all through anything else. <laughs> this is rough for me. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna do a little acapella. Uh-huh. I'm gonna let y'all go. Yeah, you know. So, uh, but when when the vibe is right, when the energy's up, when people are feeling uh, what you're doing, I mean, it just feels good because I mean, that's how I feel when I make it. Yeah, you know. So when you make music, I mean, there's a feel. I feel music. I feel it. So I'm like, yo, that's I want. You know, I want y'all to feel what I felt when I made this. Absolutely. And so I think doing events where people haven't heard of me, if mm-hmm. that's the response, I believe that that's where I feel the most, like, affirmed. And, like, I just feel really good from that. Because I'm like, they didn't know who I was. Yeah. And when the beat dropped, they, like, got right with the program. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, that's how I felt when I made it. And you got some bangers, bro. Like, like I was listening on the way up here, and I was like, I mean, go crazy, stay trill. Yeah. Like, I mean, like. Yeah, thank you. I mean. From the line, like, what was it, Steph, Steph Curry from the line, like, switch. Like, I mean, it's like, I'm just, like, I'm just vibing, like, oh, man, he's got yeah. some bangers. And I think yeah. sometimes you kind of forget, 
Yeah. Like because the way that we interact now, like as yeah. grown men, that husbands when families running organizations, yeah. it's like you forget that you was like twenty five, yeah. jumping around with good knees. You know, and it's knees like great. You know My what I'm saying? Great. Like <laughs> it is. It's just uh, and you tell people. So maybe maybe here's my next question. You, uh, I'm sure you work with kids every yeah. single day, yeah. and they tell you they want to blah. Yeah. I want to. Hopefully, they're saying I want to be an engineer or. That's what we, we prefer. We prefer, right? Yeah. But inevitably, you get somebody that's. I mean, you got a studio at the bridge. Yeah. People who want to make music, people who want to rap, people who want to go to the league. Like, can you remember um, somebody looking at you when you were sixteen in your room with your own studio making music and telling you, "Man, you shouldn't be making music." Can you remember what that feels like? And then, how does that? How do you not be that dude as a grown up now? Well, I, I remember um, it was more of a just not being taken seriously type mm-hmm. of feeling. It was like, oh, that's your little thing you're doing, you know. And why why like, people put little in front of stuff the like little, that? The little is absolutely meant to condescend. In it? Yeah. Like your little car, your little girlfriend, your little job, yeah, yeah, your, I little, heard your you little, you know. Music. Yeah. You know, keep it up. Yeah. Dude. You know, now, uh. you know, little Mark is making a little music. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but for me now, I feel like, you know, for young people, they don't know the, even the scope or the range of what their lives can be, you know, where they are at that time. Mm -hmm. And what they need is affirmation and encouragement to just lean into things and take risks and try things because it's what they learned on the journey that no matter if he starts out rapping and becomes an engineer, which I know actually a nice little chunk of music producers actually become engineers mm-hmm. because you're already working with software. You're already working with programming. Absolutely. You're doing all of you taking, I had to take my computer apart at 16 to mm. make it do what I needed it to do. So you don't know what the landscape is or how far it can go with them. And I try to be really careful to not put my personal experience with that thing or my personal views about that thing in the way of, are in a way that diminishes hope. Yeah. So if they're hopeful about anything, to have a teen in this climate Mm -hmm. hopeful about anything, you don't want to squish that. Exactly. You want to say, lean into what you care about. Well, if you like that right now, bro, go for it. Yeah. You're going to learn something as you go for it. It may work. It may not. And what I like about what you've done with the bridge is instead of telling people they can't be musicians, you put a studio in. Yeah. And you bring people up there that are showing them how to work it, and you know what I'm saying, like they're recording, they're you know, do, yeah. and like instead of saying you can't, like dancing is is not a a, a thing, you yeah. put in a dance studio, yeah, right. Instead yeah. of telling people like, oh, you want to be a chef, you want to cook, instead yeah. of being like that's a that's a dream, yeah. you put a kitchen in, yeah. and so like I love the way that you have um, empowered youth in East Oklahoma City, the way that. Um, either you were empowered or you wish that you would have been empowered. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, before we, we switch off music, because I know it's a big part of your life. Yeah. Um, how do you listen to music now? <laughs> Being somebody that has produced MC, created, written, performed, like when you turn the radio on or when you hear something that's popping, yeah. like what, how do you engage with music today um so music music is is a different thing these days you know just the way that you sound real old right now yeah i do i know (laughs) i know and but what i will say is that i have a really big appreciation for creativity okay but i also do believe that something like i also believe like you're trying to be creative for the uh um i guess the word is as a um the it's not it's not like uh you're trying to be creative, but it's not from an authentic creative place. It's because you believe it's going to generate views. Mm-hmm. Are you trolling? Yeah, yeah, and Are you doing all these things? Yeah. So it's a gimmick. That's the word I'm okay. looking for. So you can kind of hear that sometimes. So when I'm listening to music, I, I look for really creative uh, people, especially in younger artists. I want to hear people who are like taking risks and trying new things and uh, embracing their own voice yeah. and all that. I always felt like I had a funny voice. You know, it never really got bass mm. to it for mm. real. So I used to hate that. And then I was like, I was talking to my friends, Cam, um, and yeah. he's like, bro, your voice, man, you got that. Your voice got that energy. You got to make it bounce. And, you mm. gotta hit and I never had anybody compliment my voice yeah. before and like encourage it. So when I hear people with different types of voices and all of that, um, I'm like, man, I like what he's doing with his voice, you know, or what she's doing with her voice because 
they probably started out uh, self-conscious about their voice. Absolutely. Um, but I listen to a lot of instrumentals too. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I mix it up. I have, I have a crazy little palette, so I don't listen to country, but <laughs> out, outside of that, I listen to a lot of different. A lot of things. Yeah. Um, I want to. I want to use music to to pivot real quick. Yeah. Uh, you and I were talking one time, and um, I was just asking you as a musical kid um it had to be like tough like i'm um, sitting at a railroad track and hearing like the thing 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 or being in a classroom and like the tick at a clock or like oh, yeah. um and, and so to me like you've developed a very unique perspective early on how have you used that perspective uh to parent to engage in community uh because I, when I look on the when on, when I look on the east side and I look at people that have been doing it for a really long time, I think you got to have grit and you got to have perspective, you got to have vision in order to do it. So, how have you seen that just develop over time and kind of create you into the person that you are today? Um, I just believe that our potential uh, really comes from the things that we're not always paying the most attention to. Mm. So, but everything has value. And if you think about it, I kind of look at it as either like a puzzle or when you're doing those puzzles and then, you know, you got the trees and the animals and all of that. And then there's a point where you're just doing sky mm -hmm. and it just feels like this is a stupid part, whatever, but don't do it. And what does your puzzle look like? It's an unfinished puzzle. So it matters. Yeah. We got to do the sky. So I feel like every little thing that we're engaged in throughout our life, everything we do with our children, everything we do in our careers and our dreams, like even the smallest things, they actually have value. And I would say that if you're willing to lean into the small things, um, that's where the potential for great things really lie. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, you've given your life to kids, man. Uh, why kids? Um, I think I think that Number one, it's I have a grace to just connect with young people. I don't, I don't struggle to hang out with with teens. Mm -hmm. You know, it just comes natural. It could be because I can't grow a beard. I don't know <laughs> what it is. They're like he the same age as me. They like, they're always curious because there's always a moment where we're hanging. They just like, wait, how old are you? <laughs> you a senior? Or, you know, in high school. Are you a senior citizen? <laughs> right. um, but honestly. A lot of change in, in, in my life was really in those years, in those formative years. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people have a hard time. Um, a lot of people have a hard time with teens because they're more disagreeable and they have their own opinions. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they're like, hey, if I don't want to be here, I'm leaving. Absolutely. You know, teens are like, if I'm out, I'm out. Done. And I was that teen and I just remember the impact it had when people leaned into me, when people leaned into my gifts, you know, and said, oh, man, this dude's talented. Yeah. And I remember what that meant to me. Mm -hmm. Because when I was sitting in my mom's house making beats and doing all of that, it wasn't anything. My mom don't know what to do with hip hop beats. Nobody in my house really. I mean, it was just something Marcus does in this mm -hmm. room. Right. And then there was this moment where I'm letting people hear what I'm doing. And they're like, yo, this is dope. And these are older uh, people, so you know, in, in Exodus and that rap group, mm -hmm. I, was, I was a teen. I was actually a teen when that group started. Right. And I'm working with these older guys, and they're like, "Yo, this is dope. Like, this is fire." Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, the affirmation that I needed. Uh, I wasn't getting anything like that outside of my neighborhood. Yeah. And there was affirmation there, like, "Oh yeah, you watch dude when y'all fought, or you know." your jump shot good or whatever. It's typically fighting. Like, who could fight? <laughs> who could right. fight? I try, to, I try to find other stuff, but it's just fighting. Yeah. It's yeah. fighting. You can fight. Uh -huh. But um, you got heart if you can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't run, so you got heart. You yeah. got heart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which means you got beat up. You lost. Yeah, you, you lost. You but you got heart, though, bro. You ain't crying. We you got heart. With you. Right. So I feel like um, it's a very important stage of our life. Mm -hmm. You know, and... We tell young people, you turn 18 and it's time to go be an adult, but they don't feel a lot of the confidence they need to feel. Um, they don't have enough understanding of, real, of the real world yet, and they're not ready. Yeah. You know, and I felt ready. And uh, I know that that was because of mentorship, relationship, Jesus, like 
but it was the community of people around me that was pouring into me and encouraging me and saying, yeah, if this is your thing, do it. And I'm going to take you to a better studio and I'm going to show you better equipment. And yeah. I'm gonna, it all paid off. And I don't know, that stuck with me because when I got older, I began to realize, oh, wait, I was like really one of the only ones, you know, that went down the path I, would, I went in my neighborhood. But I also know that I was one of the only ones with the people around me. You know, and there were literally guys on death row, you know, while mm. I'm sitting around thinking about making beats and doing shows in other cities yeah. uh, that I grew up with, next door neighbors and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I just have a passion for uh, that age group because I know that whether we like it or not, no matter what community you live in, yeah. teenagers are at a crossroads. Everyone's teenager is at a crossroads. Um, and if you have teenagers, you know that. Absolutely. Because you're watching and you're just like, ooh, I don't know about that, what you're doing. But that could, ooh. you know, yeah. but every teen is literally at a crossroads of life because they don't know anything. They only know what's in front of them. It's close. Right. And we're on the other side of that. And we're saying, keep going. Because even though all you see is this, I could see what it could become mm -hmm. or what it can be. But I also understand that even in the failures, you, you can still achieve greatness and do amazing things if you don't give up. So speaking of that, like w when I think of the number of adults that are willing to care for kids, kids dramatically outnumber the adults that's willing to pour back in. Yeah. I mean, we have a room full of adults here today. Yeah. Like what would you say to people who want to be involved, that want to help, but are either intimidated by the, the age group or feel like they're not equipped or don't know what to do? Like how can they get involved? Um, one thing I would say is just authenticity is the most valuable thing you can offer to a young person. Um, they want you to be the adult you are when you're not around them. Mm -hmm. That's what they respond to. So it's just like you just real. And they say, man, he's just a real dude. Or, you know, he just keep it 100. Or he, get, he passed the vibe check. You know, but what they're really saying is that he's authentic. This person is authentic. Um, the other thing I would say is like maximize small conversation and small talk. You know, um, a lot of times because adults have this weird relationship with teens mm -hmm. um it's a little bit it's a little beef you know sometimes with teens you know you see videos of teenagers making uh people fall down and right. crossing them over and yeah. laughing and feel you know we, you, we we had this weird relationship with teenagers but what i've learned is that if we would take the first step and engage they'll let their guard down because they want to be acknowledged they want to be seen and whether they say it or admit it they look up to us and they need us yeah so i would say maximize opportunities when you're standing next to one in line and when you if someone's in your church or at your house or you got a nephew or a niece like just slow down for a second and just talk to them and engage them that's good that's real good man we're almost done but i got about five or six more questions rapid fire don't think about them Let's too go. long are you ready i'm ready what's something people would not immediately know about you like if they're not behind the curtain behind what curtain uh, like this curtain like this, you, oh. they see rapper they see executive director they see yeah like if they get behind like do you got six toes i but, don't have six toes okay. um i mean i'm just asking that's a great dang that's a great, actually i i knew somebody they was, was like boo <laughs> like jeez ai toes <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny that is funny <laughs> okay go no, we can't stay there yeah okay all right all right, all right. Uh, some I'm sorry, hold on. We're going to give her a moment. <laughs> Somebody's snorting right now in the audience. I don't know if the microphone can pick that up. Okay, all right, we're back. Go ahead. Yes. Um, something that people wouldn't expect, I think, is that I do actually enjoy solitude. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, 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 I'm definitely in that age where I like... Mm -hmm. I'm just like everybody get out and let me sit down. Yeah, I just want to sit down. That's hilarious. That's a big deal for I just, me. It, it, he, it was like I just want to sit down. Period. I thought he was gonna say something else. He was like, no. I just want to sit down. I just want to sit down. Yeah, like at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't wait to get home and sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do when you get home? Sit down. Sit down. You better not mess that up. Sit down. Don't mess that up for me. Listen, I remember the 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 maddest my dad ever got that I've ever physically seen my dad upset. He had just came home from work, and um, my mom had uh, she had made a jug of Kool Aid, yeah, and uh, she poured him a glass, 
And then she left the jug and was like, y'all can have a jug, leave the glass for your daddy. Daddy came home, hung his keys up, took his hat off, kicked the shoes off, walked over to the couch, flopped down. My mama came shuffling out of the kitchen with that Kool-Aid. Man, I came running through the house, boom, knocked that Kool-Aid over. And he just, he sat there, he was like. <laughs> <laughs> the thoughts <laughs> yeah yeah I can I can imagine because what what can you say I mean he was he wasn't yelling he wasn't screaming yeah. but I just knew he was like I'm gonna just kill him yeah. I was just well his eyes were screaming yeah it was just like, <laughs> like you can, <laughs> he, he was screaming he just, he just sat there I was like this guy's disheveled like he just it was bad. It was bad. That's like the last straw, though. It was. Because everything's like, I just, I, I made it through this crazy day. Listen. I'm t I just need to get to this chair. In my, in my mind, my mama called him and was like, I got this cold glass of red Kool-Aid for you. Right. You know, like, he had a, he had driving home. That he was just like, Kool-Aid. Kool he like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Like, he like, <laughs> he thinking about it. Uh-uh, uh <laughs> Pulled in the driveway. <laughs> Threw a cigarette out the window. <laughs> Come in the house like he shoes. Uh uh uh. Y'all know how you take the shoes off without bending over. You like uh uh. uh. <laughs> Sat down on that couch. I come running through Kool Aid. Just all he just. <laughs> he just want to come sit down, man. Sit down. He's just trying to come home. Sit down. Sit down. Y'all can't let me sit down. All right. Um, mayonnaise, Merkel whip. Which one? Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. Ooh. Yeah, yeah I'm an East Side baby. We got that sugar. Ooh, Miracle Whip, bro. It's sweet. It's sweet. Yeah. yeah. Um, Night Owl or um, Early Bird? Uh, Night Owl, um, Involuntary Early Bird, because I got kids. Involuntary. Got to get up. Yeah. Got to get up. Got to get up. I got one year old. So. What is the most encouraging thing your wife has said to you in the last week? Um, you got this, babe. You that's not like, like your kid. You, yeah. got, you got this. You got this, babe. What's the most encouraging thing you said to her? Um, what was the most encouraging thing? Well, I mean, that's subjective to her. I, I'd imagine. Well, I mean, you was like, I'm going to encourage her. Oh well, I didn't like cognitively <laughs> process it that way. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is, uh, I told her to do what she needs to do for her. Mm, like so, punch a kid or I'm like, like resting and oh okay all right yeah, all right yeah. do what you gotta do man I mean we got rules in my yeah. house like I don't know if I said it like that but it's just yeah. like, you know do it whatever you gotta do you know whatever you know. yeah the rule in my house is if you walk in on a disciplinary session you don't say nothing you just be like mm hmm let that ride out let it ride out and then if like she do something you be like ooh like you yeah. just gotta hold it in <laughs> and then afterwards it's like yeah now you go think about it it's like yeah. dang baby what happened yeah, like, like, it's like, like so what they do oh, yeah on the you back don't end believe it. yeah. They knocked over the Kool-Aid. I love it. I love it. You know, the, the, I knocked over the Kool-Aid. I know. Uh, the most encouraging thing I said to my wife this week was, mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm, just follow all the way. Just follow all the way. And yeah. she, had, she, had, um, she had some tea in one hand, and she had some cookies in another. And yeah. she had on some pajamas. Yeah. And one of the things I try to do with my wife is like when she feel like she's looking the worst, yeah. I try to gas her up. Why well, I be like, mm. That's mm. good. She be like, stop playing. Man, if um at the end of your your life, your legacy, man, like what do you want people to think, to know, to do, to be inspired about the life that you're living? Man, I want people to know that it doesn't matter what your humble beginnings are, you can make a difference. Mm. Just do just do anything. You don't have to do the biggest thing. You don't have to do the craziest thing. You don't have to do the, just do something to make this world better and it will matter. Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Cadence Jackson. Thank you.